Wow. Just wow. Gen 6 is already on the way? Jeez, that was a quick slap to the face, wouldn't you say? I mean, don't get me wrong or anything, I'm still excited and everything, but this just feels so sudden. This also means that the reasonably new Generation 5 is getting the axe too soon, which I find very sad. I mean, surely there's more you can do with this generation, right? It's not like it's old news or anything. <sighs> oh well, it's not my franchise. Either way, since Gen 5 is sadly coming to an abrupt end, I figured that talking even more about Pokemon would be the best thing to do. And what's the only Pokemon game that I haven't talked about to a ridiculous extent? Yep, it's Black and White 2. Since there are a good handful of things I have to say about them, I'm presenting to you my very own review of the latest Pocket Monster installments. With the basic skinny folded over, let's get to it. As you would expect from the franchise it's representing, Black and White 2 have major excellence within their presentation. Yes, the games start out like all the rest. You choose your gender, you're set smack dab in the center of your respective hometown, you briefly get familiarized with the denizens around you, and soon enough, you select your starter Pokemon and set off on your incredible journey. Kinda seems like the same old shit, but it's a largely utilized tradition carried throughout the whole series. So, no complaints here. Like the original Black and White, Black and White 2 are set within the Unova region. However, they're set two whole years after the events of their predecessors. And let me tell ya, a lot of things have changed in those two years. The player character, whether it be Nate or Rosa, starts their journey in Aspersia City, a small town situated in the southwestern quadrant of Unova. During your region-wide trek as a trainer, you'll notice all the changes made to the world around you. Newly introduced gym leaders, landmarks, and even cities are just a few of the expansions introduced here. There are a ton of changes made here every single one of them definitely for the better. Once again, Team Plasma is the respective crime organization of this region. Getsus is still the leader of the team, and they're still clad in their awesome outfits and battle themes. However, their looming presence and overall hostility level is even higher than that of the Black and White One Grunts. Also, their plans are much more straightforward this time around. Good old world domination. The GG Getsus, have yourself a bronze medal. Oh well, at least they're awesome. Though, I don't like how they turned them into pirates. Yeah, ninjas are better anyway. In terms of sound and visuals, Black and White 2 deliver this greater than all the other main series handhelds. Well, for the most recent installment, this is basically a given factor. The game still utilizes the engine used in all the Gen 4 and 5 entries, but somehow they actually managed to step up the visuals even more from Black and White 1. Hell, they constantly show this off throughout the entire journey. I personally find it to be Game Freak's way of saying, Hey, you see that awesome stuff on your DS screen? Yeah, we made that! Like a mouse. Also, like every single Pokemon game, Black and White 2's soundtrack is sublime. Tons of stellar remixes and a large selection of new tracks to rock out to. It doesn't exactly top XD's soundtrack, but it's probably my favorite soundtrack of the main series handheld. That is one hell of a title to claim. As far as the aesthetics go, Black and White 2 don't leave any aspect lacking. Their sound and visuals are quite possibly the pinnacle of what the original DS can do, and it's not hard to see or hear why. As is customary with the main series installments, Black and White 2's gameplay tremendously utilizes the formulaic battle system that characterizes the entirety of the franchise. The competitive turn-based battling layout that we all know and love is still present within these two versions. And that's great, because I can honestly say that I could never, ever play through a Pokemon RPG that didn't follow this formula. It's simple, streamlined, and super easy to use. But at the same time, the modern day battling system of the Pokemon games harbors an immeasurable amount of depth. With 649 Pokemon, 559 moves, 164 abilities, and the plentiful customization routes you can take with all of them, Generation 5's refined polishing of said formula is sure to provide a long-lasting and enjoyable journey. Given its hard-to-master nature and the shitload of variables present within it, I honestly don't understand why some others think this formula is tiring. Yes, it's true. The basic gameplay style has been the same for over 16 years now. But there is so damn much you can do with this system that it's hard to even fathom. Besides, Pokemon started with this formula, and it's my guess that it will forever remain that way. Now, I am not going to cover every little detail. Unless you figure that out for yourself. And if I did do that, even my top 100 would pale in comparison to this video's length. 
Even though Black and White 2 unaltered the battling system from their predecessors, they still managed to add plenty of additions to hold you over with. First off, there's the Unova Link, which can do several things on its own. It brings forth the key system. No, not that key. This key system basically acts as a difficulty toggle. Black 2's difficulty change is challenge mode, and White 2's difficulty change is easy mode. Both of these changes do exactly what you would expect them to do. Easy mode lowers the difficulty, and challenge mode heightens it. Don't worry, you can get both of them in either version. Just connect with a friend whom has the other version. And you're done. The other feature within the Unova Link is rather special. It's called Memory Link. If you connect Black 2 or White 2 to one of the original Gen 5 versions, this feature actually reveals important flashbacks for certain NPCs in the game. Some of these flashbacks actually shed some light on events that occurred between Black and White 2 and their predecessors. That is cool. It says a lot about your game when you even allow otherwise unknown information to be discovered like that. Kudos to you, Val- I mean Game Freak. Another notable change was the inclusion of the new form differences. Similar to what Platinum did, Black and White 2 introduced a number of distinctive differences to certain Pokemon. The Kami Trio is a great example of this. Not only do they look different, but their stats and abilities are altered as well. I mean, look at this. Incarnate form? Therian form. Definitely a welcome change. These altered forms are only available through the 3DS app known as Pokemon Dream Radar. So for all you 3DS owners out there, aka everyone else but me, you can just download this app for free. A quick mention, the alternate Kami Trio forms aren't the only Pokemon you can obtain with the Dream Radar. By obtaining various extensions, you can catch a handful of different Pokemon, all with their hidden abilities too. Even the mascot legendaries from the Gen 4 games can be caught with the Dream Radar. Despite the fact that I'll probably never be able to do this, that is a very nice touch. As far as notable gameplay changes go, that's about all there is to cover. Nothing too extreme, but definitely enough to warrant a fresh experience. Welcome back, Unova. Welcome back. Now for the really big topic. What I love about Black and White 2. The central reason for Black and White 2's surprising amount of freshness lies within the ravishing polish it gives off. In spite of using the exact same engine and the fact that they're direct sequels, the entirety of Black and White 2's adventure feels like something all new. These aren't just some meager expansions to the original games. Far from it. Sequels they may be, but Black and White 2 have so many refurbished elements from Black and White 1, it's downright ridiculous. First off, Black and White 2 made the Unova region much more enjoyable than the originals. Tons of interesting and memorable locations were added in, and the changes Game Freak made to original existing locations is certainly a nod in the right direction. I especially like what they did with the giant chasm. Man, that's cool. Remember how I went on about how Unova felt really linear back in Black and White 1? Well, its successor actually managed to completely alter that overpowering sense of linearity. It truly feels like Unova is wide open to me this time around, and that's an improvement I can fully appreciate. The new characters are... weird to say the least, but to me, that's a good thing. Whether it be the Hard Rock and Roxy, your not-so-douchey rival Hugh, the insane Brashley powerhouse Banga, or even the coolest motherfucker in Pokemon history, Black and White 2's set of newly introduced characters is arguably my favorite thus far. Before I cover my absolute favorite edition in Black and White 2, I'd like to mention some of the minor additions that were introduced here. They say that it's the little things that truly keep you going, and Black and White 2 accentuate this timeless phrase to a downright jarring extent. Yes, it's true, there aren't that many remarkably huge shifts in gameplay, but both Black 2 and White 2 contain many little things added in that I just love. New animations for both Pokemon and Trainers, Call Rest, the reintroduction of Shard Harvesting Move Tutors, Call Rest, the improved breeding system, the two new Gym Leaders, one of which has a really bad tan line, the automatic recentering in Triple Battles, Call Rest, the pointless yet entertaining Pokestar Studios, Call Rest, being able to legitimately obtain TM95 and the Zerua line, fucking Call Rest. Okay, you know what? I have to do this. I'm sorry. I disagree. Now, it is time for the PS de Resistance, or however you pronounce that shit, the P.W.T. Oh, this feature. Oh, this feature. The Pokemon World Tournament is hands down the greatest battling facility the franchise has ever seen. 
The PWT is essentially a rendezvous point for all the previous gym leaders and champions to meet up and beat the shifteries out of each other. There is zero confusion here. None of that streak-based bullshit, no measly timeouts, just send out your Pokemon, shut up, and battle for your life! Not only do you have the gym leader and champion tournaments, but you can also take a page out of the battle factory by using rental Pokemon and even go against the ever so challenging type masters. Basically, complete Pokemon euphoria. Now with all the positives taken care of, let's delve into the negatives. Out of all the positive aspects Black and White 2 have within them, are there really any negative aspects to address? Okay, what about the metagame? Okay, I give up! As far as glaring negative aspects go, Black and White 2 don't have anything to bring up. Sure, I could be petty as all hell and complain about something like EW Team Plasma's cliche and ends hardly in the game! Or My Tepic can't learn fly! But are those really things that negatively alter the game? I don't think so. The only thing that I could possibly pass off as a con is the fact that I actually wanted more put into this game. But that's somewhat of a selfish thing to say, as they already packed a ton of content into the small DS cards, enough to actually cause slowdown at some point. Jeez. Nothing else needs to be addressed here. Black and White 2 are completely free of cons, at least in the eyes of this hipster. So what's the final verdict? Do Black and White 2 deliver the greatness the series is known for, or do they pitifully fall short of everything we had hoped? Well, it shouldn't take you that long to figure it out. Simply put, Black and White 2 are phenomenal. Everything that made previous installments work and play so great or remain soundly intact, and there were enough additions thrown in to assert the huge amount of content the main games are known for. With stunning visuals and sound, the untouched, flawless battling system, the multi-regional collection of Pokemon to use from beginning to end, all the little extras thrown in, some of the best NPCs in any Pokemon game, and my favorite post-game in the series, Black and White 2 proved to us once again that the Pokemon series firmly stands as one of, if not the most, influential RPG franchises this industry has and will ever see. Like I said, it's very sad to see both Gen 5 and the DS get the boot. But if this is how they plan to finish Gen 5 and the DS off, I'm glad to know that they gave one hell of a last hurrah. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Bravo Gen 5. Bravo I say. Pokemon Black and White 2 receive a 10 out of 10. Damn.